Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas. It is good to see everyone this morning. We've got a lot of family in this morning, and that's awesome. And we are glad you are here at New Hanover Church worshiping with us this morning. We're going to be singing a lot of Christmas songs this morning and um, just having a, a good time together. We are glad that you're here uh, worshiping with us, and we just hope you enjoy your day and Merry Christmas. So our format's a little bit different, as you can tell, this morning. We are going to lead you in some Christmas hymns interspersed with readings from the Gospels concerning the story of the birth of Jesus. And so we'll have a scripture reading and then we'll sing a song that is as closely as we can relate it to it as we can. Um, and then we'll just continue to alternate. So um, you can stand or you can sit as you um, feel comfortable doing. And uh, we will um, work our way through the story of the birth of Christ and hope you enjoy listening to the story and singing the songs together as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. So let's begin with John chapter 1 this morning. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and apart from him nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. O come all ye faithful. O come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of Chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary 
uh, tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be the very great he will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, But how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have and about me have said and about me come true. And then the angel left her. Angels from the realms of glory wing your flight o'er all the earth. He who sang creation's story now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the field abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with us is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Saints before the altar bending, watching long in hope and fear. Suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Luke 1, 39 through 45. Now at this time, Mary arose and went, into, and went in a hurry to the hill country, to a city of Judah, and entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she cried out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord would come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she who would believe that there would be a fulfillment of what had been spoken to her by the Lord.
Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever. Now thy gracious kingdom bring by thine own eternal spirit rule in all our hearts alone by thine all sufficient merit raise us to thy glorious And Mary said, My soul exalts the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regard for the humble state of his bond, bond slave. For behold, from this time on all generations will count me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is upon generation after generation toward those who fear him. He has done mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who were proud in the thoughts of their heart. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and has exalted those who were humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent away the rich empty-handed. He has given help to Israel, his servant, in remembrance of his mercy. He has spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and his descendants forever. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us receive our King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. Let sins and sorrows grow, no thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, for as the curse is found, for as the curse is found, for as, for as the curse is found. The world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take you, Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. 
She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took Mary as his wife, but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son and called his name Jesus. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Who made just greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch our keeping? shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean estate where rocks and lamb are feeding? Good Christian, fearful sinners hear the silent word is bleeding. King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him in, says and myrrh, compass and king to own him, the king of kings salvation brings, let loving hearts enthrone him. Praise, raise the song on high, the virgin sings her lullaby. Joy, joy, for Christ is born, the babe, the son of Mary. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed, the living 
little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes. But little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. Thy lovely Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay. Close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. In the same region there were shepherds keeping staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night and an angel of the lord suddenly stood before them and the glory of the lord shone around them and they were terribly frightened but the angel said to them do not be afraid for behold i bring you good news of great joy which will be for all the people for today in the city of david there has been born for you a savior who is christ the lord this will be a sign for you you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger and suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem then, and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all that had, they had heard and seen, just as it had been told them. the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king peace on earth and mercy mild god and sin is reconciled joyful all ye nations rise join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim christ is born in bethlehem Angels sing glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time behold Him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, held the incarnate deity. Please the Son with men to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hail the heavenly Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. While he lays his glory by, born the bird no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the 
herald angels sing glory to the newborn king now after jesus was born in bethlehem of judea in the days of herod the king magi from the east arrived in jerusalem saying where is he who has been born king of the jews for we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him when herod the king heard this he was troubled and all jerusalem with him gathering together all the chief priests and scribes of the people he inquired of them where the messiah was to be born they said to him in bethlehem of judea for this is what has been written by the prophet and you bethlehem land of judah are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. For out of you shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the Magi and determined from them the exact time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child, and when you have found him, report to me, so that I too may come and worship him. After hearing the king, they went their way, and the star which they had seen in the east went on before them until it came and stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. After coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell to the ground and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another way. We three kings of Orient are bearing gifts we travel Field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright. Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Yes, now behold him arise, King and God and sacrifice. Alleluia, Alleluia, peals through the earth and skies. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading still proceeding guide us to thy perfect light John 1, 6 through 13. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. There was the true light which coming into the world enlightens every man. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. 
But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. testified about him and cried out saying this was he of whom I said he who comes after me has a higher rank than I for he existed before me for of his fullness we have all received and grace upon grace for the law was given through Moses and grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ no one has seen God at any time the only begotten God who is in the bosom of the father he has explained him Rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. 
Remember Christ our Savior was born upon this day To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy Oh, tidings of comfort and joy From God our Heavenly Father a blessed angel came and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same How that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy Oh, tidings of comfort and joy Now to the Lord's dream praises all you within this place and with true love and brotherhood each other now embrace this holy tide of christmas all others doth deface oh tidings of comfort and joy comfort and joy oh tidings of comfort and joy Well, we were just going to end it there, but I don't think I can get off the stage without preaching something. So Luke chapter 2, I want to just take a, just a few minutes and briefly look at two mostly forgotten figures in the birth narrative of Jesus, Simeon and Anna. So Luke chapter 2. After the time period, after the birth, on the eighth day, they would bring the male child to the temple for the rites of purification, and Mary and Joseph do this. And we're told in verse 25, Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was a righteous and devout man, looking for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to carry out for him the custom of the law, then he took him into his arms and blessed God and said, Now, Lord, thou dost let thy bondservant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. Then skipping down to verse 36. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with a husband seven years after her marriage, and then as a widow to the age of 84. And she never left the temple, serving night and day with fasting and prayers. And at that very moment, she came up and began giving thanks to God and continued to speak of him, that is Jesus, to all those who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. There are several things that we know about these two, and there are many things that we do not know about them. But what is highlighted here, I think, is important for us. First of all, they are both advanced in age, which reminds us here that there's no retirement from the kingdom work that God has given us to do. They are still useful into their 80s, and we can all still be used by God. But what is important about them here is not their vocations and their age and so forth. It is they are described here as being pious or righteous. 
and they are looking expectantly for what God is doing. This is one of the really interesting things, I think, especially as we are remembering what we've been looking at in Matthew. As Jesus is coming to the end of his ministry, he's telling his disciples in response to their questions about the end, he reminds them and he gives them parables one after the other of look ex with expectation for my return. Be about the work that you are supposed to be doing, waiting for my return. Don't be caught off guard. And he makes that abundantly clear to them in the parables that he gives them about those who were caught unaware, who were caught not prepared. And here we have two elderly people in the temple looking in expectation for the first coming, for the arrival of Messiah, for the completion, the consolation of the prophetic promises God had given to his people, the nation Israel. They are waiting in expectation for that to come. And what happens? They are there, and when Jesus arrives as an infant, they know exactly who he is. And they prophesy and rejoice over him. It is easy for us to forget that they had been waiting a long time for this fulfillment. These two individuals had been waiting their whole lives. They'd heard growing up, they'd heard all along of the promises of God that God was going to send a Messiah. He was going to send a Savior who was going to deliver his people. This one through whom all of these promises from God would be fulfilled to them. And they waited year after year, decade after decade. They did not give up hope. They did not waver. They continued to persevere. They endured. And now it pays off. These two here appear just briefly, but in the pages of Scripture for all of us to see and to be remembered for all this time, they were rewarded by God for their patient expectation of the fulfillment of his promises to them. The spiritual condition of these two is important for us to remember. They are righteous they are pious. They are in the temple precincts daily, praying and fasting, looking forward and looking for God to fulfill his promises. So just a brief exhortation and encouragement to us as we are thinking about the coming of Christ, as we are thinking about the incarnation this time of year, the birth of Christ, and as we are now waiting year after year, decade after decade, for the fulfillment of God's promises, for the coming of Christ again, are we waiting in expectation? Are we about the kingdom work that he has given us to do? It is easy for us to get very busy with our own lives, with our own kingdoms, with our own things. It is very easy for us to think as those in the day of Peter. That God's promises have been delayed. He hasn't returned. We might as well give up. But God rewards these two here for their perseverance, for their patience, for their longing and expectation of the fulfillment of God's promises. And I think this is tucked in here in the midst of all that's going on, an example to us of what God calls us to do, even now, as we celebrate his first coming, as we are looking to his second coming, what should we be doing? Looking and waiting expectantly for the fulfillment of God's promises, because his promises are fulfilled in his timing, in his goodness, every time. So as we continue to celebrate and enjoy this Merry Christmas season, as we celebrate the birth of our Savior, let us continue to do so as these two did, with righteousness, with piety, looking for and longing for the fulfillment of God's promises in his Son, Jesus Christ. Let me pray for us this morning.
Father, we thank you for your goodness to us, that you continue to fulfill your promises to us over and over again. And we see throughout Scripture and we see in the lives of the believers around us your goodness and your faithfulness to your promises. May we, like Simeon and Anna, regardless of our age, regardless of our station in life, be about the kingdom work that you have given us to do. Reminded by their example of those who wait patiently, longingly and in expectation of your fulfillment in your timing. May we be found faithful. May we be found to be those who continue to trust in you all the days of our lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to continue our worship with communion this morning. You do not need to be a member of this church. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, we invite you to join us. I'm going to give you just a few minutes of contemplation and reflection as we think about the incarnation of the Son of God for our salvation. And then I'll dismiss us to the tables. There's one in the back and one on each side. We'll gather the elements and return to our seats and partake together as a reminder that we are one body in the Lord Jesus Christ. So let me give you just a few moments and then I'll dismiss us to the tables. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and uphold it, with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Amen. Let's proceed to the tables at this time.
And this is a wonderful time to come to the table and to remember what Jesus has done as we are remembering the reason that he came. He came and took on human flesh, but he did so from conception onward. He lived a full life to identify with us and what it means to be human, made in the image of God, but here on a world cursed by sin, he came in humility, he came to serve, he came to seek the lost, and he came to give his life a ransom for those who were lost. In that sacrifice, his body was broken and his blood was shed for the forgiveness of our sins that we might have peace with God so that we can sing joy to the world. The Lord has come. And so let us do this this morning in remembrance of him. Amen. So why don't you stand with us as we sing Silent Night to close out our service this morning. Christmas. Merry Christmas. We are dismissed this morning.